Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday, June 24th, 2023. It's about 12.04 p.m. here in the state of California here along the West Coast. Latest activity shows a 4.0 earthquake here into the Middle America Trench just coming in off the coast here of the Nicaragua area, it looks like. Nothing showing up yet from the USGS, but being reported by the EMSC. All right, let's look at uh, the West Coast here. We did have a little bit of activity kicking up here into the North American side of the plate boundary, which is the San Andreas Fault here, uh, into Southern California, 3.4 coming in near the Barstow area. That earthquake, um, pretty shallow, about uh, 3 o'clock this morning. Um, see if this was felt in the region. Looks like uh, maybe a couple folks around the area reported feeling that earthquake. Uh, nothing big. But uh, looks like that struck off one of these many different fault systems out here in the Southern California area, just south of the Mojave Desert region. Ridgecrest area filling in as well up here, getting quite a bit of smaller microquake activity here around the Ridgecrest region. Looking at the rest of the state, a little spotty activity here south of the bay along the San Andreas Fault, Northern California, pretty quiet got one earthquake here outside of Eureka that earthquake coming in just a couple hours ago 2.2 26 kilometers deep that is down there into the subduction zone of the Cascadia throughout the Pacific Northwest relatively quiet conditions and as well as the Intermountain West areas all fairly minimal not a whole lot going on throughout the rest of the country either got one little Lonesome earthquake here in the, uh, this is going to be the Tennessee area, just outside the Great Smoky Mountain Range, 2.6, 15 kilometers deep. Up into the Alaska area, uh, looks about the same as what we had yesterday, there's not a whole lot going on um, up there into the region. Here's a 2.5 map and above, looks like uh, the largest, a 3.9 back here along the Aleutian Trench. A little bit of spotty activity here across the Anchorage region, but uh, for the most part, things look very typical there for now. Not seeing any major uptick around the Japan area. One earthquake from today and one from yesterday. The latest one, a 4.7, pretty shallow up here along the Izu Trench. We did see uh, we did see some deeper movement quakes here yesterday, a 4.5, 135 kilometers deep here into the trench. That uh, obviously looks like it's applying a little bit of stress here in this region. We'll continue to watch the uh, surface areas up around the Mariana Trench and the Izu Trench uh, for some further movement, considering that deep activity from yesterday. Uh, what do we got here outside of the China area? It looks like just offshore, 4.6, a little odd one. That uh, earthquake coming in from yesterday see what the earthquake 3d globe here has for that region only that lonesome earthquake there from yesterday a little bit of movement across the java trench and the indonesia area um, movement from yesterday there across the tonga trench area not seeing anything new going on there new zealand 3.2 that looks fairly recent down there so uh let's go ahead and take a little quick glance here at the GeoNet servers. Make sure we got the most recent map here. Uh, 2.1, 2.4. Uh, we're looking for that earthquake down south in the South Island, a 3.2. Um, not seeing it. There was a 3.4 yesterday. Hmm. Let's see what we got here for the earthquake drums. We'll check out South Island here. It looks like it's a pretty recent earthquake down there. Um, possibly going to be this signature right here uh, down towards the southern end of the uh, South Island area. Looks like that showed up pretty nicely there as well. Um, yeah, surprise is not listed up here on the map though. It's a little on the odd side as far as the earthquakes go. It may be, but we'll have to check out the all magnitudes here. Um, from a couple hours ago, uh, 4.6, that's a little odd, so 
GeoNet server showing a 4.6. Um, EMSC though showing a 3.2. So a little bit of a difference in terms of the magnitude level. But uh, overall, it looks like seismic activity normal there across the New Zealand region for now. Uh, there's a movement along the Middle America Trench. A couple smaller earthquakes here in the last couple hours. Of course, that 4.0, the latest. Uh, we do have a 3.8 down into the Chile area. That earthquake coming in just right now. Uh, looks like we're trying to bounce back and forth here between the two areas. Overnight, uh, we did see another 4.4 in the Chile area, 103 kilometers deep. Kind of been the trend here, deeper movement quakes, followed up by shallower, shallower uh, earthquake activity as listed here on the globe. See the deeper movement quakes raised off the globe, shallower, much closer there to the uh, surface with those threes. Puerto Rico area, quite a few twos coming in there, but uh, I believe the most, most of that from yesterday... We did have a couple more earthquakes after midnight, but uh, things are very calm there for now. The Atlantic Ocean, we watched a little swarm of activity kick up here yesterday. It looks like that triggered a little bit of movement here off the coast of Spain. Remember, this is a divergent boundary, increasing stress on separate plates here. Uh, of course, I'm going to bring up the map where the uh, divergent boundaries are. That'd be a strain over here along the North American plate and then on the Eurasia plate. But it looks like that momentum, that little increase in activity from the swarm yesterday, kicked off this 4.4 off Spain, off the coast of Spain here, about nine kilometers deep. So that's a pretty good swarm of activity yesterday, including a 5.6 there in the mix of uh, earthquake activity. Aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean looks uh, fairly calm there for the most part across the rest of the area. And that goes for the uh, Earthquake 3D globe as well. Uh, Mediterranean region. Uh, Turkey area looks like they're having quite a bit of aftershock activity there from the months, months ago when they uh, had the large earthquake activity. Some other twos out there as well. Down here into the... Uh, plate boundary well off the coast of Africa. Uh, we've got the Mid-Indian Ridge. I've seen a 4.8. That was about 8 o'clock this morning, my time here. So, divergent boundary. Quite a few fracture zones out here. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Just going to check that out here real quick. See if we got anything brewing out here. Doesn't look like it. Uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity. Some very small microquakes over here around Maple Creek last night. Notice that little sequence of very small quakes that did show up across uh, Hebgen Lake area as well. Doesn't look like that's any type of uh, anything major going on. And then again, I, I know they've been having quite a bit of thunderstorm activity. And uh, a lot of times we'll see that show up uh, on the graph. But it kind of, to me, that kind of looks like earthquake activity. We'll keep an eye on that though and see what, see what it looks like. A little bit later on when uh, storms start to brew up there. Space weather activity in the solar department here. Things are fairly calm here the last couple days. Uh, we did look at quite a few of these sunspots here yesterday. And we still have quite a few that are currently facing the Earth. But they have pretty much dissipated. All of these regions are fairly stable. Uh, looks like we may have a little bit of growth here within this newer sun within this sunspot here that's uh well it's starting to turn away from the earth now but goodness all of these are just um they don't want to live up to their to a uh, solar cycle maximum show you know i think we would expect a whole bunch of x flares and massive sunspots which we have lots of massive sunspots but they're all fairly stable folks i'm not seeing any major threat in the near future with that uh, with all of those regions looking fairly stable uh, looks like 99% chance for a C flare M flare at 40 10% chance for an X flare but I think that may be just slightly elevated uh, a look at the UV filter ray here shows uh, hardly any bright region so again that one region that I pointed out just a minute ago that's going to be this area right here. It does have some uh, magnetic arches right here, indicating slight complex 
structure within that sunspot region that is facing Earth. Uh, so if anything were to pop off from any of these sunspots, I believe that would be the area to watch. Again, that's going to be sunspot number 3340, which is now positioned right here. But notice the intenseness, the brightness of these colors indicating some strengthening going on within that magnetic structure that that sunspot hose, um, holds. All right, uh, nothing major going on as far as the auroras go. Slightly elevated conditions there up around the three uh, on the KP index scale. Uh, but for the most part, we're looking at uh, fairly calm conditions there. Weather outlook here today. A lot of that severe weather has shifted east into portions of um, regions that need quite a bit of rain. Looks like the main area today is going to be around the Illinois area. Slight risk for some severe weather, including a 5% chance for tornado probabilities. Uh, there is a wind threat and some large hail potentially around the Cedar, Rapid, Cedar Rapids area uh, in Iowa. And uh, looks like some of that may be spreading down south into portions of Missouri. Uh, let's see the thunderstorm outlook here today. That includes a portion here in Northern California as well in the in the very low risk, but hey, at least we have a chance here. Keep my eyes open for some storms brewing out here in Northern California. Uh, but yeah, there you go. There's your thunderstorm forecast that includes uh, Yellowstone up here as well in northwestern Wyoming. So we'll look for uh, those storms that probably show some uh, signs on the seismograph stations there. You know, the thunder and the lightning, the wind does trigger uh, environmental noise on those graphs. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it, folks. Um, if you didn't get a chance yet to watch the update from yesterday with regards to the San Andreas Fault, I would suggest go watch it. A lot of people chiming in there. Appreciate all the comments. Um, and we're just kind of looking into the possibilities of what's been holding up the big one out here in the, in the state of California. And it's got a lot to do with uh, lake levels and whatnot. But uh, either way, I think it's coming. Right now, the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet, but still, we see signs of the continual stress out here along the West Coast with these subsequent um, other fault systems here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. This is all, you know, you can see them all. They're all lined up, and they're all perfectly um, parallel with the plate boundary itself, indicating the stress regions out here. And that's pointed right at the southern end here of the San Andreas Fault. All right, uh, I think that's about it, guys. Um, it's supposed to be, uh, I think, about 85 degrees today here in California, so it's going to be pretty nice. Nothing uh, major going on. We do expect some heat coming up here towards the 1st of July. I was looking at this hurricane here. Oh, goodness. Looks like that uh, is... Again, this is a ways out. I do like to check these, though, because if these trends, these weather models stay consistent, then um, then that's a possibility we may see a, a hurricane develop. But right now, uh, we were looking at this last night, and it showed a some type of tropical storm hurricane developing here in the Gulf, or at least finding its way into the Gulf and uh, hitting around the Louisiana area around the 4th or 5th, but now it looks like today's model showing that uh, over around the South Texas coast, well southwest of Galveston, uh, around the 4th or 5th of July. We'll continue to watch this in future updates as uh, it is getting into that time of year uh, where we have to watch the, uh, the tropics here for um, hurricane development. Either way, we'll check back on that here in a couple days, see if anything changes with these weather models. Because once they're way out there, you know, almost two weeks into the future, these become, you know, not really trustworthy. But uh, it just gives a good indicator of weather patterns. So we'll keep an eye on it. Have a good one, folks. We will catch you guys back out here tonight. Later tonight with the uh, Saturday night update. I don't know. I may barbecue tonight. It's a weekend. I haven't barbecued in a couple days, so it's just, we'll see. We'll catch you guys out here later tonight. Have a good one.